So yeah, this $1,000 Audi drove 20 or 30 miles here down the highway to the hangar uh, without any fear of it breaking down. There were plenty of issues though, suspension problems, all the lights on in the dash, no air conditioning, but overall seems pretty solid. Tyler Hoover is a renowned columnist, content creator, and reality TV star who, despite his appearance on the reality TV show Car Issues, is more popularly known for his YouTube channel, Hoovy's Garage. For years, Hoovy's Garage has offered its 1.5 million subscribers an inside look at Tyler Hoover's infamous Hoopty fleet, documenting his adventures as he sources, buys, and repairs cars with the help of his trusty wizard. Since 2016, Tyler has managed to command the attention of car enthusiasts, turning his passion for automobiles into entertainment. However, we can't help but wonder, how did it all happen? And who is this tall, nerdy-looking guy who can't seem to stop buying broken or beat-up cars? Join us as we roll back the current on what Hoovy's Garage didn't tell us about Tyler Hoover. Newfound self-restraint, as I hadn't bought a car in over three months. Unfortunately, I've completely fallen off the wagon again hard after stopping at a dealer's auction last week. Tyler Hoover was born on July 18, 1987 in Wichita, Kansas. The love for cars runs in the family, and Tyler's father was the source of Tyler's apparent love for cars. Unlike most car enthusiasts who either grew up around cars or started working on cars with their family at a young age, Tyler got his passion from car posters. While he was still a baby, Tyler's father hung a Lamborghini Countach poster right above his crib, a car Tyler ended up buying later in life. As Tyler grew older, his room became adorned with more posters of cars like air-cooled Porsches and Alpines. As a toddler, Tyler's love for cars grew even more with the 1968 Herbie the Love Bug movie. Tyler watched the movie over and over and found himself obsessed with the cars in the movie. He even had a collection of over 100 model cars, but he did not own or get to drive his first car till he clocked 16. Tyler grew up in Kansas and still lives there. He attended Andover High School, and as soon as age 16 came calling, his grandmother offered to give him a car. However, the car she had in mind was quite unusual for a 16-year-old at the time. It was a European-spec 1985 Mercedes 500 SL. Tyler loves the 1985 Mercedes 500 SL, which he still owns to this day, but the car was too expensive for him to maintain at that age, and also because it was a hand-me-down from his grandfather. There were a lot of things wrong with it, most of which Tyler couldn't handle himself. Unable to pay for the car's maintenance, Tyler started learning what he could learn from forums on how to fix cars, but he quickly discovered that he was no wrench monkey. Tyler eventually gave up on the 500 SL and got himself another Mercedes, a diesel that proved to be more reliable. Right after graduating high school, Tyler made his way to Wichita State University where he got a degree in political science because, according to him, that was the easiest degree anyone could obtain. However, while he was in college, he worked as a car salesman in a Chevrolet Cadillac BMW dealership for three years. But before that, Tyler had actually worked at a CarMax dealership, quitting after four months because he hated the structure and sales tactics. Nevertheless, Tyler left his job at the Chevy dealership to focus on college because he was struggling to balance a full-time job with school. And months after he graduated from college, he established his own car dealership. Tyler was banking on the experience he had gained as a salesman at the Chevy dealership to help him out, but things unfortunately did not turn out so well. From his time working at dealerships, Tyler had seen how much money could be made from selling cars, and he thought that by owning a dealership, he could have all of that money to himself. In 2010, Tyler's dealership at Astra Automotive opened its doors to customers. Tyler specialized in used old Mercedes, but he also bought anything he thought he could make money on, a tactic he still employs to date on his YouTube channel. Unfortunately for Tyler, just five years after his dealership was established, he had to close shop because he quickly found out that it was hard to make money in the car dealership business. Tyler confessed that although sourcing inventory was the main reason his dealership closed down, he had a personal problem that also affected the business. Tyler suffers from a compulsive buying disorder. He's a hoarder who also wants to keep the good cars and the good deals for himself. This way, he managed to own a collection of over 40 cars. While Tyler's nature of hoarding things has proven to serve him well on YouTube, it initially didn't help his car dealing business. 
After the dealership failed, Tyler moved on to a franchise called Freddy's Frozen Custard and Steak Burgers. He went from selling cars to flipping burgers. Thanks to the help of his father, who was in the restaurant business, Tyler quickly climbed the corporate ladder at Freddy's and became a partner. He was assigned to openings, where he was tasked with setting up the management team, employees, and everything else. After getting them trained really well, he would move on to the next newly opened location and repeat the process. Despite his success at this new venture, Tyler still wanted to work with cars. Did you know that Hoovy's Garage's existence is primarily due to a tweet Tyler Hoover got from one of the most famous automotive presenters in the world? Tyler got bored with his restaurant job and missed the time he spent buying and selling cars. He wanted to get back into cars and figured if he couldn't buy or sell them, he could write about them. He was inspired by the articles written by Doug DeMuro on Jalopnik, but he didn't know where to begin. Tyler emailed several people, saying he wanted to write for them, but got no replies and no writing gigs. But then, a friend of his got a surprise invite to the premiere episode of The Grand Tour in California, and he asked Tyler to come along. Tyler attended the premiere and convinced his friends to cosplay with him as the Interceptors, inspired by a Top Gear episode where the host had Jensen Interceptors. Tyler cosplayed as Jeremy Clarkson, having no idea what was ahead for him. When they got to the premiere, Tyler was lucky to meet the presenters of Top Gear, and he had conversations with all of them. Jeremy Clarkson was quick to recognize their attire and was quick to start a conversation, asking them if they had Jensen Interceptors. He even signed Tyler's 2001 Mercedes CLK 55 AMG key. While they were conversing, Tyler asked Jeremy if he would get a tweet back if he tweeted him because it would really help his credibility as an upcoming writer. Later after the premiere, Tyler tweeted a picture from the premiere with a tweet that said, Great day at the Grand Tour launch. Thanks for the party. Jeremy immediately replied to the tweet saying, Great to meet you and thank you so much for coming. And it went viral. Tyler took a screenshot of the tweet and emailed it to Jalopnik. He had written to them before, asking to write for them, but didn't get a reply. However, when they got the email with the screenshot of Jeremy's tweet, they emailed Tyler back, asking if he wanted to write about the experience. That's how Tyler began his career as a columnist. Hoobie's Garage was still a few months away. After a few months working with Jalopnik and making some videos with them, Tyler found himself bored again. At the same time, Doug DeMuro had left Jalopnik for Auto Trader, and Tyler sent him an email begging to work for him, even if it would have to be for free. Tyler got a response, but Auto Trader was looking for someone to make videos. Regardless, Tyler took the job. He just wanted to work with Doug DeMuro. Tyler's journey as a car content creator started with two iPhones, one of which served as a camera and the other as a microphone. He edited his videos in Windows Movie Maker. The first video Tyler made was about his 1978 Lincoln. Doug loved the video, and from then on, Tyler became Doug's sidekick. When Tyler made his first videos for Auto Trader, they were a far cry from his videos today. In fact, the first video he made for Auto Trader was so terrible that they asked him to put it on his own YouTube channel, and that's how Hoobie's Garage was born. Tyler made one video and wrote one article every week for Auto Trader. All the videos he made were about the cars he owned. Tyler had a 2007 Mercedes S600 that he bought for $4,000. The Merc had a blown engine, and he made a video about it. This video was his first to go viral. It went viral on Super Bowl Sunday in 2017 and now has almost 6 million views. The video started Tyler's genre of buying cars for cheap because they're broken. But over the years, Tyler has had his fair share of misrepresented cars and has shown his audience how easy it is to get scammed and lose money on cars. The first car Tyler bought for YouTube was a 1992 NSX for $30,000. He thought he snagged the cheapest NSX in the USA, but the dealer failed to mention it had hit a curb and was massively out of alignment. After getting the car fixed, Tyler's addiction to buying broken cars only grew. He began purchasing more vehicles, fixing and flipping them, and soon dubbed his collection the Hoopty Fleet, crowning himself the Hoopty King. Tyler couldn't stop hoarding his cars. The habit led him to own around 40 cars at some point. However, he recently sold most of the cars, keeping the number of cars he owns below 20. All these cars are housed in the hangar where he lives, which has a condo attached to it. Somehow, Tyler has managed to live the dream of every car enthusiast, making a living by buying and fixing terrible cars. And it's all thanks to YouTube.